Good counter attack. I don't know why they want to put their heads next to each other. Only going to cause problems. I'm not sure what Bailey's arguing about. Yetabare was running away from him, then turned on him. There comes the arm across. Six one half dozen the other. Referee gives it one way. Just got to get on with the game now. on the spot just to separate the two players not spending an awful lot of time in the opposition's half of the field so we need to be precious with the ball when it does happen yellow card for Cater not what they expect from the captain inside Tambora in the referee's notebook here Well, I think the referee's asking him to move it a yard away. And Kater is <laughs> not happy with that. Now, can he bend a good ball into the box? Can they put Ivory Coast under a bit of pressure here? There's been very little to talk about in their attacking play in this second half. Is there now a chance? I we'll see a substitution. Well, surprisingly, Sacco looks to be the player coming off who I think again been a real threat on the counter scored a great goal oh he'll be gutted to be missing out on the closing stages of this but it's a change that Casper Jack made in the first match with the Tongo Dubia coming on Well played, Sarko. Caton swings in the free kick. Two stationed far side. It's away only as far as Cater who picks it up. Cross in from the right flank. Missed by the goalkeeper. And poked away somehow from those two white shirts in there. Yatabare and Ndai. Well, it looked to be a comfortable take for him. In the end, it's the sender half. Cannon who gets it away. Here's Aurier. Away from Dumbia. It's Aurier. Still Serge Aurier. What a run! Oh. Player out to the left as well wasn't used. And Aurier didn't even get a shot away himself. Here's Gradle. Oh. Oh, TNA was desperate. Great run from Aurier. I think Boney, with his run, took a couple of defenders away. There you see the run. Koulibaly can't get to him, and then he just overruns the ball. But outside in TNA made a really good run. Can they hold out here, Mali, and inflict on the Ivory Coast a first group stage defeat at the Africa Cup of Nations since 2006? Cairo when the Ivory Coast were beaten by Egypt. Gradle tried to chest it down to Boney. There's going to be some relentless pressure here from Ivory Coast, but they have to keep hold of it first of all. Silla. Still clinging on, the Eagles of Mali. Bakary Sarko's early goal. Kater just clipped there. Didn't really need to do that. TNA. The field player was just about to close him down and try and pitch the ball off Kater. He came back and committed the foul. Overrun it, Kater. Did you see Raider was about to pitch it off of him. Second half here, a rather elongated affair. Sadu Katia swings it long. Silla. Well forward here. Kuba Silla of Casera Sport. It's done well.
another change. Been a difficult afternoon for Ivory Coast defensive unit. Again, the goalkeeper out to catch that with the minimum of fuss. Launches it long, Kubohu. Yatabare comes the decision. Free. Another cheap free kick. They can't afford to keep doing that. TNA, second time in a couple of minutes. And another one. It's going to be a yellow card, I think, for Tiote. Indeed it is. Chip Tiote into the referee's notebook. Increasingly frustrating here for. Ivory Coast and that coupled with the yellow card against Guinea means that he will sit out their final group fixture and that it will be a big loss for Herbert Renard who will feel that nothing is going for his team here. Yeah, just late in the challenge there, Tiote. He does get a, his fair share of yellow cards. Not the most disciplined of players, but it's a good combination him, or should be, him and Yaya Turi in that midfield area. There's going to be a change here as Suleiman Kalu comes on for Wilfred Canon. Well, that's going to change their system again. Kalu coming on. He'll obviously go into a, a wide area. Just saying there, back four they're going to play with now rather than the back three. Still only 29, but seems he's been around forever, Suleiman Kalu. 71st cap here. Player who's wound up at Hertha Berlin after his years with Chelsea and Lille. He's very upset at Hertha Berlin at the moment. He's got a lot of playing time, or hasn't had playing time in recent weeks. A team that aren't doing particularly well. What can he do here? for Ivory Coast. He has 28 goals for the national team and he's throwing everything at the opposition here because Gaji Tallo will come on. It's no more bony. Something of a surprise. Well, that is a surprise, actually. Well, Javinho can't understand why, nor can I really, why Boney would be the player to come off. Well, it's a new look forward line going into the last five minutes here. I think Levy Renard might have a few problems with his team here. Another free kick given away. That's the substitute who's just come on. I don't know why he's putting his arms up. Goes right into the back of the defender. Tallow from Bastia. He's a newcomer to the setup as well. We know that Irving Renard is trying to blend the seasoned professionals with the, some of the youngsters coming through. Only a fourth cap today for Tallow. Wagway. It's all the way through for Gabohu. They've lost all shape really in their side. It's made changes. You still have to have some sort of structure in your team. They don't look a happy bunch, do they? On the sidelines there. Diakiti with the throw. They are closing in now on a famous, famous win, Mali. The Ivory Coast is reliable as you could wish to see from a team in the group stages of a continental competition. Nine years since they last lot lost a match in the group. There's Tiote. Good run by Aurier. Excellent ball into him as well. Aurier slips it back for Grado. They finally unlock the door. 
Ivory Coast have done it again, just like in that first match when Dumbia stole an equaliser. This time it is Max Gradle who side foots beyond Berte. It was an excellent Ivory Coast move. And have they rescued a point again? Well, Aurier has been a real threat throughout the game on the right-hand side. Mainly as a right wing back. They've now switched to a back four, but it hasn't stopped him getting forward. And I think it was Yaya Toure who played a brilliant ball inside the fullback. And what a good pass it was. And you've got to give credit to Gradle. Kept his composure. He let the ball run across his body. See, Koulibaly doesn't get out quick enough and actually doesn't stick his leg out to stop the shot. But it's a good finish from Gradle. Maybe the goalkeeper could have done better. Berte. Yes, it might be. You've got another chance to play, Jovino. Because remember, he won't play again in the last match. And they face Cameroon after being given a two-match suspension. But goodness me, Ivory Coast are cutting things fine at the Nations Cup here. And there's been a, another yellow card as things threaten to get out of hand. The referee is right there. Well, TNA has the ball at the moment. Yaya Toure stepping in. Tiote, the player, that looks how he's down. Silla's been involved in a lot of the crunching tackles. He's the man that's got himself booked. Yeah, yellow card. At the end of all that for Yakuba Silla. It wasn't Silla that made the tackle. All, it was Yatabare. I think Silla had something to say. As thereafter did to Ivory Coast skipper. Well, there must be almost about 10 minutes to play at the end of this game. Okay. And here is the goal again. Just lets it run across his body. It's a side foot. Actually goes almost down the middle of the, the goal. But Aurier's been a real threat. Pretty belly, why doesn't he stick his leg out? That's what he'll be thinking. So, after Yatara had scored first for Guinea in the first match, Dumbia equalised for Ivory Coast 18 minutes from time. They've left it even later here with Max Gradle of Saint Etienne. Calm the nerves a bit for Hervé Renard and it made him smile again. Could Bert, Bert say the goalkeeper have done better? Did seem to go straight down the middle, didn't it? Finish from Gradle. Now then, can Ivory Coast harness this momentum and go on and win it? I think that would have been Berthe's first touch of the ball. Kalu, no way past Dumbia there. How many minutes are going to be added on? Tambora wrestling there with Kalu. Tambora gets the better of him. having a go at but whoever it is only six added on minutes that's a surprise you have to say the amount of stoppages and the incidents we've had in this second half mainly injury related Toto down again this is a problem because they've made all their substitution Ivory Coast having to go at the referee <laughs> that's who he's saying there should have been a yellow card somewhere amongst all that we've seen a fair bit with Renard's teams in Nations Cup matches down the years here on yours but can't ever remember him looking this on edge well I'm not sure that there's that good a team spirit amongst this Ivory Coast team my eager coming on as well, he did we were led to believe that that's exactly what he brought Urban Renard but you just never know do you there you go. West Ham 
the arm. Now on loan at Mets. Injury time, super sub, maybe. Sadie Dunia as well, replaced by Seri Deer. Stoppages upon us now. Kasper Jack will think about what might have been. And now there's discussion between Sarko and Mustafa Yatabare down there on the bench. Are we going to have late drama? Yakuba Silla will play in the corner. Missed by the goalkeeper, but the whistle is up. He's looked strong, commanding in his penalty box, Sylvain Gabo. Shoved over by Tongo Dubia there, the Mali sub. with Serge Aurier. Well, he's given a bit of shirt tugging here as Tello backed in. He hasn't really had an influence, although when he came on the field, they were 1-0 down. Tello's given three kicks away whenever it's gone near him. This is a problem. Teote can't carry on. It's the third time he's been down. And they have no one else to put on. They've made their three substitutions. And he'd have hoped his team could have hung on, but I think he'd still be pleased if his side do get a draw. Kasper Jack scored that great goal early on. Ivory Coast didn't create too many opportunities. Well, they've dominated most of the play. Someone needs to check his blood pressure at the end of this game. reputation of being one of the uh, most laid-back coaches around well, he wouldn't have been laid back there had that overhead beaten Kabuhu not today we might say of Hervé Renard but uh, Ivory Coast and they live to fight another day in this competition it'll be interesting to hear his press conference after the game you're not asking the questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good effort. From Sambu, Yatabare. Aurier. We're heading for the seventh one all draw of this competition and the third in this group. Here's Kalu. There is still time for someone to be a hero. Teote is not moving well. To keep the ball away from him, it's with Aurier. Slots it through for Kalu. Teote can barely run. Bertrand Bailey. Bertrand Bailey again. Is it going to come into the box? Absolutely not. Really wasteful. Well, actually, when he put his head down to kick the ball, TNA was in, out in that position. TNA started running back almost into a left back position. Surely they want to go and win the game here. Ivory Coast. We're into the last minute of time added on. Berthe couldn't quite do it, could he? couldn't come on and keep a clean sheet. So, what a final round of matches in Group D we are going to be left with now with the Ivory Coast playing Cameroon on Wednesday. That's here. Guinea face Mali. Remember, Cameroon against Guinea. It's coming up later, kick-off in just over an hour. Here's Kalu. It's Solomon Kalu digging the ball across and put behind by Yatabare for a corner. And it's going to be the last activity here. They can't win it with this, can they? That was good play from Kalu. He couldn't get past his man, but still played it into a dangerous area. Kolo Turo had the header in the first half. Well saved. Is there going to be one last 
moment. Dramatic moment. The end of stoppage time in Malibu, sent in by Torre, and Berte with the claim. That could well be that here. Three matches in this group. Three one-all draws. What will Cameroon and Guinea serve up a little bit later on this pitch? Hervé Renard has seen his team stutter and stumble again, just like in the first match against Guinea, but it will all come down to the final round of fixtures. Sarko scored right at the start, really, for Mali. Six minute, and what an excellent goal that was. They just couldn't edge over the line, though. Just four minutes from the end, Max Gradle side-footed home the equaliser. Ivory Coast underwhelming, it finished 1-1. Yeah, I mean, Herb Renard tried everything to get his team back in it. He changed the system, changed the personnel. He took Boney off, and that worked for him in the end. But they just lacked that cutting edge. They dominated the play in the second half. They could get Aurier down the right-hand side at will at times. But in the end, I think it's just about a fair result. Marley didn't deserve to win the game, nor did Ivory Ghost. So... A heart-stopping finish, really, in Malibu has finished with honours even. And Ivory Coast and Mali will go into the final round of matches with a chance to make it out of the group. It's finished 1-1. We just, I don't know, really expected more coming forward from Ivory Coast. Well, he changed it and then played with three up front right down the middle. He was brave. Raider was the one that came on and scored the goal. Boney was playing alongside Dumbia. But we always felt that Mali may cause a problem on the counter-attack, particularly through the excellent skills of the speed of Sacco. Well, he was then taken off, which was a surprise. But he was the one that started it off right at the beginning of the game with that goal. Here's the counter-attack. Yatabare 